Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Derek Mitchell, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about fonts. So what I wanna do is dive right in. This might be a really long, fairly scattered lecture because I've got a lot of resources to show you. So as always, don't forget, you can click the little link below to speed this video up, or if I go too fast, you can slow it down. So what we're gonna do today is look at font pairing. We're gonna talk about how to know what fonts work well together. I'm gonna to give you some tips, some tricks, some hacks, and just resources along the way that are gonna help you be able to find really great fonts to use your next project, where to download them, and all kinds of things like that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I wanna show you is we're gonna be talking about how to find what the font is. So let's say that you see a project or you see a website or you see something that you really like. How do you know what that font is? And in the previous capture video that I made, there's a link here somewhere uh, where I talk about Adobe Capture. That's a great app on your phone if you're out on the street somewhere and you see a font you wanna use. Take a picture with your phone and you can use that app to figure out exactly what that font is. So the other way you can do that, there's a lot of different ways, but one of them is if we come into Google and we search for what font browser extension. There's a lot of really great browser extensions and the one that I use maybe isn't the best, but it's the one that I found that's worked well for me is called what font so if you're in Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever you're using for browsing the internet you can add extensions and for mine it's already added and you can see this little F with a question mark so I can click on this and it'll show me on different pages what the font being used on the website is so as I hover over different titles or text I can click on whatever I want to see that it is and it'll show me the exact weight the size the color everything I wanna know about that font to replicate that either in a print project or on a web project. So this what font extension is a really great uh, tool to use. So I definitely recommend that as one approach. You can also use a website called what the font. So if we come up here and type in what the font, it'll actually, if I go to a new web browser, I'm, I'm right there, but it's just what the font.com. It'll redirect to myfonts.com and you can take an, a screenshot or if you have an image of something, you can upload it. So for example, let's just grab this what the font title. I'll just throw it on my desktop and then let's go ahead and click here to upload that from my desktop. That's the wrong one, there we go. All right, we'll open that and we'll upload it. And now I can select or make a selection around what I want to identify. And then we'll click the big blue button. And it'll give me a bunch of different possibilities of what that font might be. So this is another really good way if you want to see exactly what the font is or maybe find something similar. Uh, these types of uh, font matcher, uh, whatever you want to call it, apps, web apps are a great way to go. So Adobe has one too. If you go to fonts.adobe.com, over here on the top right, we have a little camera icon. So I can click on that and I can do the same thing where I upload that screen grab that I have. We'll go ahead and click open. It'll analyze it and it'll scan the file. And then what I'll do is I can select as much or as little of the image as I want. We'll click next. All right, so it was able to identify the letters. If it doesn't, if it's not able to see what the letters are, you can kind of tell it what the words say. We'll click next. And then it'll give you some different options of what fonts might work well, as well as if you have the Creative Cloud subscription, all you have to do over here is click on the toggle to activate that font immediately within all of the Creative Suite. So whether you're editing video in Premiere or you're working in Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, whatever, it'll immediately be available on your system. So that's another great tool to use. Font Squirrel is another one. So if you go to fontsquirrel.com, this is a great place to actually find and download fonts. We'll get to that in a second. But you can do the same thing. You can upload an image here. And so you might find a trend that, you know, basically you grab an image and upload it and it's gonna get you close. Now, depending on which library you're using, so if you're in Adobe and the type kit, or if you're here on Font Squirrel or what the font, they're all gonna have a different font library they're pulling from. So you're gonna get different results depending on where you upload your image. So just keep that in mind as you're uploading images that you might not find the exact match depending on which library you're in. So the next thing I want to talk about is Photoshop. So in Photoshop, if you have a project open, you can use, we'll come up here to type and we'll go down to match font and it'll make a selection and you can refine your selection around some different text here. And depending on how much of your image you have selected, you'll notice this match font window changes to find similar fonts. So 
let's see, I'm pretty sure this was Roboto Bold. So here is one of, uh, it sees it in here. It doesn't really tell me which one it is exactly. It just sees similar font, so I can click OK. And if I were to double click in this text, you can see for sure, oh, it's Roboto Slab. So it got me close. It got me really close to the right font. But that's one way that you can actually match fonts within a document. So you can bring it into Photoshop. Now here's an example. I threw my logo in here. We'll come up to type, and come down to match font. And this time we'll just scale this around the image here. And it's gonna struggle with this one, but it still gets it close. It can tell that it's kind of a brush script. I did this with a Sharpie marker, so this isn't a font. There's no way it's gonna be able to find the right font. But it can tell, based on what I have on my system, uh, fonts that might get me close or be similar. So that's a really handy tool built right into Photoshop that can be helpful. In my experience, it rarely gets it right but it at least can find some similar fonts that might be helpful as you're working on a project to get you over the finish line. So the next thing I wanna talk about is font pairings. So basically, uh, there's a whole bunch of people who are way smarter than me who can tell you exactly what fonts pair well together. For me, I just look at it and I just think if I like it or if I don't like it, but there are some ways to know without guessing if something is gonna look good together. So what I wanna do is show you, one of the things you could do is just Google font pairing tool or font pairing generator. And the nice thing about getting a font generator sometimes is when you use these, they'll also give you HTML code that you can copy and paste if you're using it for a website. Uh, font pairing, uh, ideas, so anything like that, you're gonna see all kinds of great links and articles, but let me just show you a couple that I found that work pretty well that might be helpful for you. So the first one we're looking at is at canva.com slash font dash combinations. So what you do is you just click a font to start with. We'll start with Babis New, and it's going to show you some different options of fonts that work well together. So we've got Babis New and we have Source Sans Pro as font options. I can click in here to edit the type and it's kind of tough, depending on the size of your screen or where your browser window is. Uh, the first time I looked at this, I didn't see these little dots down here or the next arrows, but you can actually see, depending on the font you choose, there might be a few different options to look at. So as I click through here, I can see there are some different font combinations that seem to work well together. And I really like that I can see it sampled in different art pieces to get an idea if it's gonna work for the project I'm working on. The next one is fontjoy.com. And one thing I forgot to mention, you guys, uh, at the bottom of this video, I'm gonna put a bunch of link resources so you guys can see these links that I've uh, referred. Also, you can go to my website at derekmitchell.com forward slash, I think it's resources. Uh, but again, I'll put the link down below so that way you guys can see all these things as I'm going through it. So at fontjoy, you can just click up here to generate a random font pairing. And then if you find a font that you like, what you can do is click on the lock icon over here to lock that font, and then you can click generate to regenerate multiple uh, combinations and just change the other fonts that you haven't locked, okay? So we can also change if we want a balanced contrast or very similar or a high contrast. So adjust the slider and hit generate again. We can make it on a dark background or a white background which will change how your eyes perceive this. So this is another really great uh, place to find some ideas for font pairing. What I don't like about this one as much, let's see, if I go, let me close that window real quick. If I go back to that, so I can click on the font and open up that font directly in Google Fonts, which is great, but I wish there was a way to click the button to have all of the HTML code and everything like that. So let me show you a couple other font generators that have that built in. Here's one called Typespiration, and they're working on getting the HTML, so keep uh, keep tabs on this site for sure. But basically, again, lots of different font pairings. We can adjust the color of, of what options are available. We can enter in keywords. We can search for all kinds of different things. And when we click on this, let's see, it'll take us to uh, the details. So as far as the fonts used, the colors used, and again, they're gonna be showing the HTML and CSS code soon. So it looks like they're trying to uh, get full style guides for Adobe XD and some other apps too that'll be really helpful for those of you who are developers. So keep your tabs on this. This is a good resource. Uh, let's speed this up a little bit. So this uh, fontpair.co, this is another great site. This is the only one that I've seen so far where I can click download and it'll download the font pair. So let's say you're like, wow, I really like what this looks like. I can click on the download font pair and it'll throw a zipped folder of both of the fonts and the entire font family right inside. So that's really handy, really slick, works really fast. So I recommend this one if you're just gonna be scrolling through. Again, we can refine our selections across the top. Let's scroll through here. Okay, here's another one. Uh, it's designshack.net. 
again, links below. But basically what I like about this one is you can scroll through quickly and see a sample. If you like it, you can click on it. It'll take you right to the font. Or if we scroll down a little bit, it actually calls out the link you need to embed this into an HTML document for web and then the, uh, the CSS styles as well. So super handy, really nice to have, uh, makes embedding it on websites really easy. So here's another one, typ.io, we'll go to inspiration. So same, similar kind of deal. You can see, uh, different samples of, uh, font pairings. And then if you find one that you like, all you have to do is click on it. I'm going to go back a couple cause I like the one that I had pulled up. So click under, get under the hood, just click on any of the images and it'll pull up the details for this. So if I scroll down, I can see under the hood, all of the different styles and colors that were used to design this look. So again, a really handy tool to get you close if you're trying to find a style. Next is another article from Canva links again below. What I like about this is it's their ultimate guide to font pairing. I think this is by far the cleanest article with some different, uh, different examples of font pairing. And, and to me, I think if you're a brand new designer and you have no idea where to start, I would definitely start with this article and just get familiar with some different font pairings and what works well. And then, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, let's jump back to, uh, the font joy link. I don't remember where I was at. Okay, here it is. So I forgot to mention, if I come back and I scroll down a little bit, uh, on fontjoy.com, this, how it works link, click on this. This is a really cool article where they talk about font pairing and what works well. So if you really want to understand more than just, Ooh, this looks good, but you want to have a firm grasp on what makes a good font pair, check out this article. Cause they explain it way better than I ever could. And that'll help you, uh, really, really understand how to pair your fonts and what's going to work and what might not work so well. All right, so now you should have a pretty good understanding of what font pairing is and how to find some different resources that'll help you on your next design project. And the next step is, well, how do you get those fonts on your machine? So depending on where you've searched for font pairings, there's gonna be a, either a download link right there to make it nice and easy for you. Or in this case, I'm gonna show you three or four different libraries or resources that I use for my fonts. So the first is Adobe Fonts. Uh, it's at fonts.adobe.com. And the reason why I like this the most is because it's seamless and it integrates directly with all of my cloud, uh, creative cloud, uh, apps. So right within Photoshop, when I'm searching for text, I can immediately download fonts if I want to. Um, I think most of you probably know, but just in case you don't, when you have a, a text highlighted, if I click on the little drop down up here for my font over here on the right, we have this add fonts from type kit. So I can click on this little green icon. It's going to open up Adobe type kit and I can go through and I can refine exactly what kind of uh, font I want. I can refine it from the classification and I can change the properties for the weight, the width, the height, all that kind of stuff. So this is by far my favorite place to search for fonts before this was a thing way back in the day. I actually used to use thefont.com. So, uh, this one's a little sketchy because you get a lot of different, uh, font options in here, a lot of different designers. Some of them are really good and some of them they're still learning. So you might get some fonts that don't look quite right, whether it's the kerning or um, maybe the actual program file of the font is a little bit corrupted. So you kind of have to be careful with this. However, that disclaimer aside, what I love about it is you can research from all kinds of really unique styles. So, uh, by far, probably one of the best, in my opinion, place. To, so let's say you want to look for something like distorted or destroy right here. We'll click on this. Some of this stuff is great because you can find different fonts that you won't find in probably any other library. So this has some really great options. If you're trying to make something just truly unique and custom for some sort of a poster or something, this is a great place to look. Another one similar to this would be font squirrel. So if I come back to font squirrel, a lot of times I like to search by what's the hottest fonts of the day. You know, what are people, other people using, just trying to see what's available. And then you've got this blue button over here to download real quick and easy. The next one that I like to use is Google fonts and, um, it's, there we go. So with Google fonts, when you first come here, a couple things I want to point out, you've got some great articles and some featured font links up here. That'll help you out. If you're trying to figure things out, we can change the background from light to dark. 
depending on what you're going to be using. It might help you see what the font's going to do a little bit better. And then, you know, again, we can change our categories and, and whatever we want to do. But when you're ready to add the font, what's cool about it is we'll click on the little plus and it's going to add it to a selected family down here at the bottom of your browser. So you can go through and click a couple that you want to use or whatever you want. And it's going to add them down here. And when you're ready to download the file, just click on this. It'll open it up and you can either get the link to import it into your website or you can download you can get the at import styles. So it's really flexible if you're going to be using this on a web project or there's this little download arrow up on the top right. I can just click on that and it'll physically download the font files to my machine so I can use it even in print documents as well. So I know that was a lot of information. I hope that was helpful. To me, it feels kind of like a, a boring YouTube video to make. Like I don't have any cool slow motion or anything like that. I, I just, it's a topic that I get asked a lot about and typography is such a huge topic. Like it really could be its own masterclass. So to think I'm gonna cover everything in one video, uh, it's just a lot to get through. So I hope that some of these resources help you. Uh, maybe helps you see how I approach finding fonts for my own projects. And then the next thing I would recommend if you're interested in this as a topic or you want to become a better designer, I highly, highly recommend even buying books. So some of the books that I have that have helped me, uh, this one's called Stop Stealing Sheep and Find Out How Type Works. It's a super great book. It's in my kit link down below. And then uh, in that kit link, I've got all my books on my bookshelf. Um, and then I've got this book, The Complete Typographer. So a manual for designing with type. It's a pretty thick book. It's a great book. I highly recommend that as well. Uh, if you plan on being any kind of a professional designer, it's something that you really need, be, need to become very familiar with. And I, I can't recommend that enough just to stay with it and to keep learning as much as possible. But as far as the actual physical, how do I use fonts in my projects? This is how I do it, right? So I go through, I'll either look for a font pairing idea or I'll use Adobe Capture on my phone to take a picture of something that I see that I want to replicate or I'll just mess around with picking a font inside of Illustrator or Photoshop. So that's it, guys. That's all I've got for today. I hope that helps you out. And if you want to learn more, if, if you learned a lot in this video, imagine how much you could learn in my graphic design vault. So if you join the vault, there's a link below. You can get access to literally everything that I've ever taught. And there's a great community there as well to help you out if you get stuck and have questions. So check that out. Your support by joining the vault is what helps keep this YouTube channel alive as well. So I appreciate those of you who are already a part of the vault or have purchased my courses. And that's it, guys. That's all I've got for today. So I hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next one.